less there's other options people wanted to explore, like rather than calling it a historic monument. And we sort of started a conversation about that. So we're gonna look at some signs, we're gonna look at some branding, and then we're gonna look at the streetscape, how we might handle the road configuration. And as Madeline said, if you have a question or a comment or wanna yell and scream, well, don't yell and scream. <laughs> but, but if you have something that we need to know, we're trying to get, we, we wanna come up, our goal is to come up with an action plan that that we can maybe use to solicit funding and stuff like that. So um, nobody's gonna like everything, but you know, try and think, put, put yourself in the situation like, well, how, how can we improve the downtown? It's, it's got a lot of potential. There's some things that we don't, I think that we need wider sidewalks and such, but let's, I will stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michelle, you'll let you take over. Good morning, my name is Michelle. Um, I'm gonna take you through our slides fairly quickly just to give you a, an overview of the project. Um, but yes, feel free to jump in if you have any questions. We can also make these slides available to you after this presentation as well. Oh, might help if I turn it on. <laughs> uh, so we'll start out with branding a little bit. As Jeff mentioned, there was some discussions about moving away from historic monument as the general branding for downtown. Um, so we wanted to kind of get your input on what it should be called instead. Here are a few of the options that we've come up with just throughout different conversations with Madeline and some of the other people that work for the town. Um, so just going straight to monument itself, uh, downtown monument, monument art district, creative district, or cultural district all have some options that go through the state with certification to actually become one of those designations. Um, but that is certainly within reach for this town. Uh, small town monument was another one that came up. Um, does anybody here have any specific ideas or anything that you're drawn to? Kind of wanted to get some feedback here real quick. It might be too early in the morning to have creative ideas. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> What's wrong with historic? Nothing wrong with it. It's just, it was something that came up as part of the discussion if they wanted to rebrand the town overall. As we do the wayfinding, this is the prime. It? it is the prime time to look at that if it is something anybody, you want to do. Asked the yeah. question does anybody want to rebrand it what's wrong with historic i see nothing wrong with that no i didn't either i like it it's been that way for how many years how many well, historical like event how many historic buildings or a lot things are still left in downtown, downtown yeah. mm -hmm. my building that building yeah there's a lot of historic here the school and there's, then a, the... there's some old houses that are left there sure I like historic. Anyway, that's my opinion. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, why change it after all these years? I mean, people recognize historic monument as being historic monument, and we do have history, like you said, so I don't see any reason to change the branding. <laughs> well, it's interesting, just to, just to backfill on this, the last meeting we had, there was a great it seemed like a great push towards getting away from the historic. So, like, unfortunately, we never the had the same exact group of people. Who was at the meeting? That so, I don't know. So that was a large group, uh, largely people from our downtown design standards group. So that was a mix of some of our downtown business owners as well as residents. So there were business owners. Anybody at that meeting? <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. we have more. Right. Right. Two. Oh, okay. And there were, I will say, for a couple of years now, the downtown merchant group have been meeting and talking about this that I think a lot of you guys don't attend. So this has been a discussion for a couple of years. And we're not, I want to say, we're not advocating one way or the other. We're actually just trying to figure out, before we have signs designed mm -hmm. and, and actually call it something, we want to make sure, that, because the signs will have a lifespan, hopefully, you know, many years, and so we don't want to have change the branding after building new signs. <laughs> On the other side of that, I've lost my voice, so I'm going to do the best I can. Um, I know a lot of people in those meetings were feeling histo the word historic seems to date it mm -hmm. um, for obvious reasons. And if we're trying to attract, um, you know, younger families, then I don't think that the, his, the term historic is like, Ooh, let's go find out what that's about. So I think that is what a lot of the um, 
controversy was like let's change it it's been like this for a long time maybe it's time for a little update we're at some point going to have to i'm not sure we put it to a vote necessarily but at some time at some point we should probably have to arrive at some sort of consensus and it is not our job to to create the consensus we're going to facilitate it. we're going to try and help people talk about it and, and the people that want to call it something other than historic historic's easy because there's a lot you know we all understand what it means. Um, the people that want to call it something else will have to compel you folks to sort of agree with that if that you know if that's even possible. So um, it's not. And when does that vote happen? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. We we're we yeah. should, we it's too much easier to put people in that group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when we have that vote. We'll probably have a, a number of other meetings and then we'll consolidate. We'll probably invite everyone to a larger meeting. We just wanted to sort of start having these conversations so that we can tweak the information based on this feedback and then we'll likely start having bigger meetings to where we try to arrive at some consensus. And who are these other people you're going to invite? The public in general. So, um, you know, residents, you know, people that frequent downtown, um, you know, we'll, we'll make it a much broader swoop of people. I don't think that's a good idea. I think the owners and the business people ought to have a larger percentage of say of that than people are just walking down the street. Well, our residents want to be involved. We've seen that. They've been showing up to these meetings, so we feel like it's important to involve them as well. They're the people that are coming to downtown really downtown i mean when people think of downtown monument they think of 105 area that's no, always been the downtown i would think mm -hmm. no, no, they they think the the yeah. yeah and i believe part of this was also looking at the wayfinding signage was also to help attract more people into the town area since there is kind of a divide between the town with the highway so it's kind of trying to bring this make this the main focus it already is a very lively area so we just want to make sure people know about it more if they're passing by on i-25 and i think i want to be clear our mission statement is to draw people into the downtown right. area and make it seem vital and vibrant and stuff like that and that's to benefit the business owners nothing that we're trying to do is is should be held as contrary to that our our only mission is economic development for the downtown businesses and so that's that's what's fueling this debate. We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts on this before we move along? We just wanted to kind of start that conversation up, keep it going. I know it's been an ongoing one, so we welcome your feedback. Again, we have no stake in what it ultimately becomes or if it stays as the historic monument, but we just wanted to hear from you. I'll get the you know the perspective of the business community before we move forward with public meetings. Okay, I will move forward then. Um, so now we're going to run through the wayfinding scheme. So again, this whole goal of this would be to help establish a strong, attractive visual and cultural sense of the town of Monument and help divert locals, visitors, and passers-by away from I-25, get them into the downtown area. So some of the program items that we are looking at would be a new gateway that would actually move over to 2nd Street, either before or after Beacon Light Road. Uh, directional and directory signage for businesses, maps, electronic signage was something that came up. Um, we'll also kind of touch on light pollution with that. And then highway signage and banner signage, which I understand is something that you do already have, but continuing that with any sort of rebranding that does happen here. Um, so this is the general area that we are looking at. Um, this shows high traffic areas based on CDOT traffic, so the larger the circle is, that is the greater traffic there, and then, I, I'm sorry, these are a little bit difficult to see, but when you look at the slides later, you'll be able to see them, so it's a little triangle symbol shows existing wayfinding signage throughout town. This is your existing signage that you know and love. And then these are a few of the schemes that some of our team members have come up with over time. So this one shows a little bit more bright, colorful, a little bit more of a modern style of design. Uh, this one is a little bit more traditional, but still a little colorful, kind of just 
similar to the existing signage shaping, but just kind of updating the, the visual aesthetics of it. Um, this one is kind of a little bit different. It's gonna give it, a, again, a little bit more of a modern feel. This would be like a laser cutout of the Monument Rock um, that just kind of gives you another sense of place of this area. Um, this one, again, is gonna be a little bit more on the modern side with kind of sandstone or flagstone, um, kind of showing how it would light up at night versus during the day. It gives it a little bit more of like a playful kind of creative feel with the, the different kinds of text like art, eats, treats, brews, snooze, and parking rather than, you know, the standards of like hotel, restaurant, that kind of thing. And then this one would also be sandstone, um, kind of incorporating the monument rock in a, a more subtle way and just keeping it a very like clean modern style look. And then we had also talked to Madeline and the team about potentially adding uh, CDOT tourism oriented directional signs from the highway locations. Um, so these are their standards. You can do just straight up text or a logo if you prefer, um, but they do have options for getting these placed along I-25. Um, these are just a few of the areas that we have scoped out based on traffic patterns that would potentially be good ones. So a little bit further out on the highway, um, along the exit ramps here and here. And then these are the two locations that we were looking at for the new gateway as well. So there's just an example of what that could potentially look like. So this one would be along the highway and a little along an exit. And so now we'll look at streetscape renovation, just to give you a little bit of background on that, it would be to enhance the pedestrian and vehicular experience of downtown Monument through the redesign of your existing streetscapes. Um, so the main thing that we were looking at with this was widening the sidewalks, which will help increase pedestrian flow and address some of the ADA concerns there. Um, we would also be looking at narrowing the lanes of traffic, which is a traffic calming strategy to hopefully help slow traffic down a little bit in this corridor alternate road and parking configurations, planters for street trees and small shrubs and flowers, seating and shade, which are all gonna improve your user experience as people are flowing throughout downtown. How about businesses. stop signs? Stop signs, absolutely. Yeah. That's a big one. Do you want to have stop signs? Just not at second in Washington. There's yeah. not one. Okay. Do what? There's not one second in Washington, yeah. but there's... Um, That'd be nice that they slow traffic down a lot. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> we don't have that incorporated in our plans as far as I'm aware, but it's definitely something we can look at. Well, I mean, that's a, sort of a baby, you know? Or we might have. If you ever try to cross Second Street on your foot during the day, you know, sometimes, mm -hmm. even though we have pedestrian crossing, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you better watch, make sure they stop. Yeah. But if we had a stop sign there, they'd stop. It'd slow them down. The four-way stop there means we lose parking on all sides of that intersection. Uh, Do you uh, see regulations? Are you sure? Yep. Yeah. That's what I've been told by the uh, by public works. Yes. How can that be? I mean, they just put those bumps out there and a stop sign. I it's, know. I think that's already gone. I think that was to avoid losing losing the. Parking spaces. Anyway. There has to be so much space between a stop sign and a, and I understand. a parking. Right. Well, maybe we all look into it. The city, I would certainly slow traffic down. Yeah, and we do have some parking configurations that we'll walk through here in a, in a few moments, um, but we can certainly look at that as well. Um, so these are from the NACDO Global Street Design Guide. So it's just some kind of precedent imagery to get a good feel for the space. Fortunately, everything here shown is in meters. So the conversion is one meter is 3.28 feet. So just keep that in mind. Three meters would be about 10 feet as a, as a good rule of thumb. Um, so they're just showing the different uses and modes of different types of transportation and how much space that they do take up. Um, another thing with sidewalks, they should be wide enough to allow for two people in wheelchairs to pass one another. So you do need at least uh, two meters to make that happen. They should be unobstructed, level, and smooth surfaces and provide cut-through paths and medians for pedestrian and recreation as well. So just looking at some of that thing. Um, some key elements for optimal pedestrian experience would be seating, lighting, water fountains, weather protection, trees and landscaping, active building edges, waste receptacles, and curbs. 
And then again, just looking at how these different configurations can work together. So you can have pedestrians and lighting or active business fronts, pedestrians and street trees. It's just a few examples of how you can utilize the space in different ways and configure different streetscapes. But uh, the one thing that we did find was that lanes greater than three meters are discouraged because they enable unintended speeding, double parking, and consume valuable right-of-way space for other modes of traffic. Narrow lanes do and reduced speeds help minimize crashes on city streets by reducing that right-of-way for cars and making people more aware of what's going on. So they're, they're doing studies to kind of mo monitor how traffic flows work with narrower lanes. Uh, right now, I believe your traffic lanes, I'm gonna say they're like 14 and 17 feet wide, but we have them shown in the video that we'll show you here in a moment. So there's definitely room to narrow the actual lanes of traffic. And so now we will actually show the video that my coworker Taylor has prepared. Um, this will walk through three different streetscape redesigns. And then we can always go back, but we do have some stills of this as well. If you need to see anything again, so we can run back through it. It is the ideal spot for that nostalgic Colorado feel. With its breathtaking views, access to nature, and small town feel, Monument Second Street will lead you to its great downtown that is populated with art shops, little restaurants, and a variety of locally owned businesses. Monument's current roadway conditions consist of one eastbound and one westbound lane of traffic measuring between 14 feet 3 inches to 14 and a half feet. Two lanes of parallel parking and narrow inconsistent sidewalks varying from 4 and a half feet to 7 feet 7 inches. Monument's current streetscape prioritizes vehicular traffic at the expense of pedestrian comfort and does not provide adequate space for street trees, planters, social gatherings, or new wayfinding signage. As part of the strategy to drive traffic towards and assist in public wayfinding throughout Monument's downtown area, we are excited to propose three streetscape design iterations. We focused on varying areas of 2nd Street between Beacon Light Road and Front Street. Iteration one converts the street to one-way westbound traffic, keeps two lanes of parallel parking, and widens both sidewalks to 12 feet, allowing ample room for pedestrian traffic, street trees, planters, and signage. Iteration two preserves two lanes of traffic, each lined by a planter strip. It keeps one lane of parallel parking along the westbound road and widens both sidewalks, both wide enough for new wayfinding signage and room for outdoor social spaces. Just outside of yeah. Two sides of the stri south side of the area intersection. Iteration three also converts the street to one-way westbound traffic, includes one side of angled parking and widens both sidewalks, allowing ample room for pedestrian traffic, street trees, planters, social gathering space, and wayfinding signage. 
So it's important to note that this is in, what's that, you know? Yeah, so with the uh, iteration one maintains your exact same amount of parking right now. Iteration two does cut it down to 30. We believe spots. the pedestrian experience in downtown Monument is influential to the town and its anticipated growth. And these alternatives combined with new wayfinding strategy will encourage visitors to stay, dine, shop, and explore. And then the last iteration shown actually increases to a total of 70 spots. For YouTube. Oh, it's YouTube, right? Yeah. Did we really incorporate a YouTube? Sorry. One is going to have 64, which is your current amount of parallel parking spaces. So this does still maintain them on both sides of the street where they are. Iteration, oh, iteration two. There we go. Um, has 32, so it essentially removes the left side of parking to increase your sidewalks um, and still allow for dual way traffic. And then iteration three does actually increase by six spots up to 70 total parking spots, which just shifts them all onto one side of the street at angled parking. Yeah. The traffic would route around to different streets. Through the residential? Um, so yeah. I know it would end up front street, street and third. Yeah. 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 So essentially we are proposing between like Beacon Light Road and Front Street is the general range that we're looking at here. And there would have to be signage to direct people particularly. I mean, if you live here, once you do it, you're going to know it. But for people who are visitors, you'd have to say right. downtown loop or whatever. I mean, part of the part of the hope I think was that <clears throat> directing people over to third, you know, would also enhance and give opportunity for a business the business to expand off the third in some way. And certainly the I don't is it Front Street where you turn you yeah. turn right, right where the so you know. By having, by directing people that way, you might create more business districts and thereby enhance sales, tax revenues. Although that clearly would take some time. Would Third Street remain two ways? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you wouldn't be doing the loop thing. Right. Okay. Really, we only have so many moves we can make to get the get the sidewalks wider. And we really do believe that would be a, I, <clears throat> at some level you need to get to ADA compliance on your sidewalks anyway. But the opportunity to expand businesses out on the side, you know, the cafes and, and also just enhance the pedestrian experience. If you go down there now, we've, we've anecdotally seen people walking a stroller or dogs and in some in some places, not all the place, not all the way in, on the street, but in some places, one person can't be walking one way and another the other without, you know, really somebody jumping off the sidewalk on in the street. There's it's, you you got to walk in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other comment we got from people, I don't at the last, I think the first meeting was about having more shade and greenery and stuff like that, which is obviously not easily done without taking something away. So one, you know, basically the, the iterations here, like can we live with a one-way street and then have keep all the parking just as it is? Or, you know, you know, obviously angled parking is a thing that some people are gonna like and hate, and some people are gonna hate, <laughs> but you get more parking. Um, it's also important to know that when you have a um, like a one-way street, the comment about crossing over, you have a much narrow, you only have to look one way, and you have a much narrower street to cr traverse when you're actually walking across the street. So that's a pedestrian benefit. Most of the stuff is about pedestrians, but still trying to keep 
maintain parking. Maintain parking. We also understand, understand that has been the importance of parking. But there are lots downtown, and I think part of the wayfinding that we're doing is to draw people to the to the off street parking lots that that would supplement uh, the on street parking. So. Yep. <laughs> so these three proposals are is this going to happen? Not necessarily. We're we're evaluating what our options are. Okay. Then my next question is, of these three options, who decides which option will be uh, installed? Again, through the public meetings, you know, we'll, we'll kind of cull the information and the feedback, and kind of develop what what the consensus was, and then the biggest piece of this is the funding piece. Okay. It's not going to happen this weekend. Yeah. No. <laughs> I wouldn't even imagine it would happen, you know, much before five years from now. Oh, I'm fine with as long as they don't decrease the parking. I'm fine. Just as long as I get the vote on it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And so that was, you know, another one of the reasons why we find like widening the sidewalks is going to be so important, but also maintaining the parking because you still want to drive traffic to this area and hopefully get people out of their cars walking on the streets, stopping into businesses rather than just driving straight through. So giving people more of an experience on the business fronts and activating the business fronts through, you know, like you can expand service outside depending on what the business is or have additional space to do that, which we already do. Um, just kind of hoping to increase foot traffic and drive business here. The problem with diagonal parking on a one way street that is narrow is that if you, if you got cars next to you, it's so hard. You sort of have to stick your rear end out to see somebody coming, whereas parallel parking, that's not, a, it's easier. That's my only comment on diagonal parking and parallel parking. I like parallel parking on both sides, because that gives businesses on both sides, people can park in front of their stores if they want. Right, it does. That's fine, it's just yeah. a comment, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I just no, want to make sure, point. I want to be, make sure I'm involved when we decide how we're going to do this. Right. <laughs> The, the only benefit to angled parking is that you can fit a few additional More. spaces. Yeah, well, the but, Town of Monument yeah. already decreased our parking place. By, we used to have angled parking. Mm -hmm. And someone higher up thought that it would be better to be parking, uh, parallel parking, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, if they put the diagonal parking in, I do hope they put a stop sign at Second and Washington. Getting out now with the parallel parking is miserable. Yeah, it's, it's so difficult. It's really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look one way and then cars are coming from over the railroad tracks. Then you look the other way and there's no time. Right. And I just quit going that way completely. So I do hope that that's the give back. <laughs> Was, yeah. You know, if, if there's need to have parking at every intersection, I mean, uh, stop signs at every intersection, I think that's a, I actually don't know what that would really cause in terms of the city decision-making tree, but I would think that that would be something that, that could be done. Uh, I think the angle versus um, parallel parking on either side is really, frankly, a way of how can we maximize the parking. And I completely agree that there's some problems. If you're in a small car parked next to an SUV, you got no shot to know it's coming. However, angle parking also acts as a traffic calming. Mm -hmm. People are pulling out and it does sort of slow traffic just by definition in the area. So maybe it's not such a big deal, but I understand anybody's reticence about that sort of thing, it seems. Yeah, and another thing with parallel parking on both sides of the street with a one way, you could potentially have a situation where two cars from opposite sides are trying to back into the same lane. So it is, you know, it is a trade off to ensure that you can't widen sidewalks too. Um, there is another strategy that we didn't necessarily look at because it's generally not super popular, but it would be back in angled parking, which from my experience is actually safer because you're when you pull out, you have a much clearer blind vision into the street, but it takes some getting used to like actually like pulling in and then backing into an angled parking spot in a downtown environment. So just another thing to I think consider. I one but... block of it in Denver down by Trader yeah. Joe's and it's the most bizarre 
It doesn't go, you think you're driving right. the wrong way on the street. Like, oh wait. Yeah, like if you're not used to it, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a very strange feel at first. Yeah. Downtown Manitou just installed a section of it too. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We can look into that and see yeah, how it's, it's going. It, you know, we're, what, we're talking about three or four blocks or we'd be doing this on. I mean, it's something to think about. I, I think, you know, I do think that, you know, whether we go to parallel or angle parking, I do think that the other part of this puzzle is to really draw attention to the off-street parking that, or the, the, the visitor parking lots that exist right. elsewhere. Certainly. And um, I assume people who live in or, or work in downtown Monument, their employees are using those lots. I don't know if that's even true. Um, Not in a lot of cases, no. Where are they parking? Sometimes close to where the businesses are. Okay, so that, so that's, okay. This lot, this lot that's right here is, is empty most of the time, and I would say part of that, I think, is lack of signage. The sign is this big yes. versus this big, and that's, that is something that I've been asking for for a long time, and I think that's something that the county can fix very easily, very fast, to let people know. I mean, even on our busiest days, it still is half empty, and people are trying to search for parking, so I think that alone would help. And do we actually have a, is there a maximum parking, like can you park, is it two hour parking or is that no. most of it? You can no, park here you. as long as you want. Really? <laughs> because that, that might be a thing to get the employees out of there anyway. Um, I mean, you, you, you don't want to have, like most people do want people to park, or to be able to park. If you're selling, if you have a flower shop and somebody's stopping on their way home from work, it's nice to be able to stop right in front of the, Park right in front of the flower shop and do your business and go on. I actually think there's an advantage to forcing people to walk a little bit because they might mm -hmm. walk by another store that they want to walk into. Oh, well, look, there's a book there I'd like to buy or whatever. So there's some sort of opportunity that goes into um, forcing people not to park right at the front door. But I also understand as a business owner, you're, you're, you want to make it super convenient. But having your employees park out on the street means that those, that those, those places are not available for, for drop-in kind of parking. So we sh at the very least, either have a regulated, you know, two or four hour time limit to park downtown, or really encourage employees to, to park in a more re remote lot. I know that's a hard lift. These are schemes. Any other questions or feedback on any of the slides? I'm happy to flip back to anything if you'd like to see it again. Just keep us informed before you do anything. Well, like we I said, this is that's a, this is the very we just started this yeah. in August, yeah. so this is the second group that's even seen this. Yeah. So I'm all for signs. They look fine. Especially signs to put people to a parking lot is mm -hmm. it's hard. I mean, I know where the parking lot is, but I mean, if we saw it, are there signs right, for visitors, yeah, are there signs? <laughs> there are signs about this big, really small, mm -hmm. very, very small, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, big signs. Yeah, for the parking lot, you mean, huh? For the parking yeah. lot, for yeah, parking lot. I agree. Yeah. And you know, if you're a business owner and somebody parks in front of your store, I have a tendency to let them know about that. On that note, are there any other key features in town that you feel signage is lacking in? Lacking? Mm -hmm. If you want to upgrade the signs to monument, I'm fine. You know, as long as it doesn't blow down when you build it. Right. <laughs> it's pretty windy at the end of this street. Thank you for your input today and for your time. Again, we can make these available to you. Um, the video itself is on YouTube. If you want to look at it again, you can send all of this out. Um, yeah. Madeline, do you have any? Oh, I do have one general overall comment. I think as we start looking at design changes and name changes, I think we need to take a long look at what is now here. Mm -hmm and take into consideration that if we go too far away from what is here now, the more southwestern look, it's kind of jarring to the census like we don't know who we are. And maybe we don't. 
I don't know, of the sign options at the very beginning, I thought the one that had the light post that we have now, because they are in place, as well as Monument Rock, I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, do you mind if I flip back and just so we can all make sure we're looking at the same one? That you just passed it? This one? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that we have those light posts now, that's sort of the classic look, which is what a lot of the buildings are towards the southwest architectural style. And then featuring the rock is, an, is something we have and no one else has. Right. I think that's nice and I think the designs are simple and they don't jar or conflict with current buildings in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important. And I think in, that, in this particular case, and, and I'll, I don't think that there's been any movement to change out the light fixtures, by the way. Right. That was never, we were just sort of trying to see how this sign package would work on a light fixture mm -hmm. per se, because, I, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna change those. Um, we're just trying to be consistent. And this, I don't know, maybe, does this have a, do you have a gateway sign for this one? I believe this was Daniel's. So okay. I don't think he has All right. Well, so we one of the things that the, the, that came up in the last meeting was the real need to have like a gateway sign to really say this is a special place downtown, historic downtown, or whatever we want to call it. This is a special place, and so we would, we don't actually have a gateway. Some of the other ones had some gateway things that we were looking at. Yeah. Kind of. what, what's the sign at the end of the second street? Is that, that a gateway? That's not a gateway. The one that's there now. The, the brick and stuff? Yeah, yeah, no, I... Isn't that a game? Yeah. We were going to put this one down farther to the not up. But those, I'm going to tell you, when somebody visits Monument, yeah. I mean, to be honest, the, 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 the problem with that gateway is all that stuff happens after you've made your decision which lane to be in. And so that's why you wind up going down the business, uh, the, the commercial highway area, which is the kind of one fifty one five or yeah, some engine highways. Yeah. Um, and and <laughs> uh, and that is a um, that sign is beautiful and and there's nothing wrong with it except for it's not you don't see it until you're right on it. And it it doesn't even have like a directional like go down this road to be downtown. We're trying to create something that says turn here and go into downtown. I don't think we're trying to circumvent or change that sign. I think we're trying to get something that's somehow a little bit farther down the road to sort of right. call attention to the fact that there's stuff going on down there. Now, again, in every different meeting, the, the last meeting we had, there was a big consensus about we need a gateway. And I'm not sensing as much of that here, but sometime we'll all get together. <laughs> <laughs> arm wrestle about it. Meeting. The gateway actually would be nice, and I do agree that this sign is a nice sign, a, a nice indicator of monument, but it has no, it has nothing about it that says turn here and go down 2nd Street at the end of that story downtown. And when you're coming on off the highway, you hit that, and you're already in either a turning lane or a go straight lane. Mm -hmm. I think gateway signs are fantastic. Uh, several years ago, someone did, I don't know if you were you were the same people, one on Washington and uh, 105. Hmm. And, that's, and then we find out you see that property. That was a fantastic entryway, clean columns and flowers and, and plenty of room. And then one on second and or third. Uh, I just think they, it invites people to under it yeah in general we're not we're going to stay away from CDOT property because <laughs> it's just too it, it's too bad because that needs to be cleaned up out there right? well, maybe, well, then, well, I'm not saying fourth and I'm saying we're going to completely stay out but for, for a gateway sign or a sign that just gets more complicated I'm not I'm speaking for yeah. Madeline now. I'm just I, I'm just saying it's it on second street everything you do on second or the third for that matter is up to the town so we don't have to deal with this larger bureaucracy to tell us what we can and can't do.
work and Thank create you. a world. We appreciate y'all being here today and you providing your input. This is a huge part of the process for us. And so, yeah, next step would be a public meeting um, to gather general input from the larger community as well. And we'll go from there. And, and I wanted to ask, I don't think we really will ever, I mean, maybe we'll go to a vote, like, like a, a ballot initiative, but I think what we're trying to do is take we may, we could maybe do a survey. Yeah, and, a survey. Yeah, yeah, I think a survey and sending it around to everybody to get some feedback that way. But I think in general, we're just trying to read the temperature of different rooms that we're in and say, well, my takeaway here is that from the business, from this group, keeping the historic, you know, name is an important part of it. And it would be interesting to have that other group here to say, well, here's what we think and, and have you guys discuss it not it's not for us to decide and who's so, this other group it's the downtown design standards group so it's downtown a, design mm -hmm. who makes up this group so it's a mixture of a few of the downtown business owners as well as a group of people that are residents oh, oh, okay i just wonder who's voting for us well, See, I, yeah vote I just want, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. no voting. It's, about it's this. all just conversation at this point. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's why feedback is still super important. Like none of this is set in stone. Like we're looking for everyone's opinion on what they think of this because there's plenty of opportunity to still change things, incorporate your feedback, um, take your suggestions. Like we're, we're, this is a long process. Okay. And, and actually when we actually come up with what we'll call a hybrid scheme or a final scheme that everybody feels that that's what we should move forward with. There will be a final meeting. Anybody wants to come and throw the last minute darts at it and say, don't do that or whatever. And then even after all of that, okay. then we take those, those schemes, those ideas, compile the information of how much public feedback we got, and that is what's going to help us get funding for these projects. So there's still a long process ahead of us. And remember, the sole, really, the number one purpose, I don't know if it's the exact sole, but the number one purpose of doing all this is to get the businesses more business. Because, you know, we've been hearing that businesses decreased a little bit, that our ops aren't as busy, and all these kinds of things. So it's just trying to figure out a new, different way to get more people down and have them feel more comfortable and happy to come downtown that ultimately benefits you guys.